Thank you, Dr. Hirsch, for accommodating me early. Uh, uh, I'll talk about the selective laser typoplasty as a therapy in India. And uh, share, basically, I'll share my experiences because we don't have much literature from this country. Uh, selective laser typoplasty basically means is that we are treating the angle of the anterior chamber with the, some kind of laser. And usually, we have been doing it with organ laser typoplasty earlier. But now we have another laser which is much less disruptive and much more gentle and milder and doesn't really need it, uh, leave behind any physical damage and that's called selective laser trabeculoplasty which is a very low uh, fluence laser and uh, it's kind of a YAG laser at 532 uh, nanometer and uh, with a very small uh, you know, pulse of 3 nanoseconds or so. Uh, the way we do it is basically very similar to what we have been doing with our organ laser uh, trabecular plasty that we are treating the ang ang uh, 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 angle of the anterior chamber as a trabecular meshwork. But there are several differences because with the argon laser we were using a small spot size about five, uh, you know, 50 uh, microns and then we would target the, the pigmented trabecular uh, meshwork and also uh, we adjust the energy to get a little bit of spot there with a bubble formation and it would leave behind some you know, mark as we did the laser. Uh, SLT on the other, ha other hand is uh, uh, you have a wider uh, spot size there, you don't leave behind any mark and it's a very low energy and you can put confluence shots and treat you know, 180 degrees or 360 degree angles in one go. So that way it's much easier to do procedure uh, as, as long as you can identify the anatomy of the anterior chamber angle which is very important because uh, you have to hit the trabecular meshwork and not the iris or the cornea. Uh, so this was earlier uh, started in, you know, late night all in 1988 and the earlier studies actually they showed quite a bit of promise and with the glaucoma patients that were uncontrolled with, uh, you know, with drugs and they could be, uh, the IOP could be lowered in those cases and subsequently a number of uh, studies have appeared in the literature which uh, for both, uh, for the uh, patients who were uh, refractive to you know, uh, medical treatment or they were not responding adequately to medical treatment and, and also patients who were the first timers and in both ways it's kind of a, uh, quite effective. Now application of 360 degrees or 180 degrees could be done but 360 degree provides an effective and safe IOP reduction in medically and controlled OHG and uh, the baseline IOP was found to be a kind of a most important factor in the efficacy of the therapy. So higher the baseline IOP mode uh, tends to be the, you know, the IOP lowering effect. And that's true with all kind of anti glaucoma medication therapies basically. So if you look at the SLT as a primary therapy, now a lot of literature has actually come up and I just quoting some of the studies here. Uh, this is from the Caucasian population where uh, you know, the, for PUAG and ocular hypertension where IOP or with SLT was done, they found about 30% reduction in IOP, which is like as good as putting these patients on latinoprost. So IOP here was equivalent to a drop of latinoprost and this was kind of consistently lower pressure up, up to 12 months follow up. And this is from a Eastern population, Chinese population, again, showing the efficacy of uh, laser trabeculoplasty. Uh, you know, and here it was compared, you know, there were two groups kind of randomized between laser and the medical group and there was no difference in the IOP reduction between the medical and the SLT group uh, even after up to five years. So that's kind of a very uh, long follow-up and suggests that perhaps we could use SLT as a primary uh, treatment. Other advantage of SLT is that it's a sustained lowering of IOP because IOP, in the drugs if you miss a drop the IOP is going to go up and also uh, drops have a high half-life and after that the IOP has a tendency to go up but that's not the issue with SLT because it's kind of always there. So it has several advantages other than that like it could be used in OHT, POAG, NTG, Cedar exfoliation, steroid and disc glaucoma, pigmentary glaucoma and now there are even some studies where they have done SLT for angle closure glaucoma after doing laser iodotomy uh, if the angle opens up. And there are it's very convenient to do, the compliance to drugs is not an issue. The cost of treatment probably in the long run it might be cheaper and availability is an issue but I think the machines are becoming now common. Uh, so does it work for our patient? Actually, that's what Hirsch asked me uh, a few times. And so we don't, we don't have much data from our country, but 
so we did a small trial of you know very small group, basically 37 patients, and all these patients were not the primary uh, SLT. They were all on uh, medic, uh, anti glucose medicine, medicines and maximum medication basically which they could took, uh, and the, still the pressure was uh, high. There was not control. We did 360 degree single sitting about 100 spots total. And we didn't treat uh, them with any steroid or any anti uh, inflammatory period before or after the SLT. We, however, did check the IOP for any spikes uh, immediately after uh, two, three hours after um, SLT and 12 hours, seven days, and then you know followed up up to one, uh, 12 months. Now, these are some of the examples. This was a pseudoexfoliation patient, and before uh, SLT, you can see the IOP has been really fluctuating with number of drugs, and after SLT, it kind of became flat and. Uh, remains so for you know about a year or so, and this is another patient of POAG which came with the high pressure in the right eye, and we did selective laser trabeculoplasty. Uh, this was with medication, and the IOP controlled with lesser number of medications, and it was remained kind of a quite uh, stable for the next uh, 24 months, that's two years. At that time, he underwent cataract surgery, which threw the IOP off balance again. Uh, this is another patient. Uh, you know, with the POAG again, a similar story that after laser I had taught me that SLT, the IUP was very well maintained over a period of about two years. So out of 37 eyes or 33 patients, I think majority of them were male, and you can see the uh, pre-treatment IOP was high in all these patients, like quite high in some of them in fact, and they were all on at least uh, about three medications common. So majority of our patients were uh, POAG, uh, but there we have some other subgroups also, and this shows you how the pressure behaved before and after uh, uh, SLT. So we started with high pressure, and there was immediate drop to 12 hours later, which I, which was went up a little bit. But you know, after six months, uh, again there was a significant drop in IOP uh, in SLT group, and the reduction of IOP that was achieved immediately there was about 40% reduction which kind of reduced but at six months again there was around 30% 28% reduction even at six months so so which is actually a very good uh, you know outcome so the number of topical anti global medicine were reduced uh, uh, they were all on anti global medicines so they were reduced in some patients uh, but majority of them continued to have anti global medicine even after SLT but the IOP were controlled so that was a good thing and uh, uh, only four patients were ever kind of needed uh, surgery after that. So IOP reduction was uh, noted in all subgroups of glaucoma with, that we treated, though the majority were POAG, and uh, so there was not any significant complication. One patient, the pressure actually went up, and then three patients, there, there was no reduction in IOP at all. So to conclude, the SLT lowers IOP in open angle glaucoma in our population as well. And uh, IOP lowering is actually comparable with published data, which is there in literature about like up to 30% IOP reduction. And uh, we didn't see any vision threatening complications. Uh, and IOP, as I mentioned, has several uh, SLT has several advantages uh, over drugs, uh, and the compliance being, and I think, one of the major issues in all populations, including our population. Uh, thank you so much. Uh,